We are blessed to live in this country, right? And Absolutely. San Diego, America's yes. finest city. Glad you're with us here on a Friday, 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Stella Escobedo. Thank you for watching us. Good morning. Another foggy start to your morning, though, this morning. Yeah, a little bit of a haze out there. Take a look at the video. This was the uh, drive from the South Bay through National City. Uh, it's just some uh, low lying uh, fog out there. Uh, a little tough to see some of the intersections. And another view of the fog. This one from Mission Valley. Yeah, we want to see the fog in your neighborhood. Upload your videos through the Near Me feature through the News 8 app. It's free to download in your app store. Netta, what time can we expect that fog to clear up? You know, about 10 a.m. it looks like. So we have this dense fog advisory through yep. 9 o'clock this morning. A quarter mile and less, that's your visibility right along the 5, the 805. If you're coming in from the coastline at all, you are literally stuck under a lot of this low cloud coverage. So definitely want to drive slow, use those headlights. Check it in on that visibility from Oceanside to Kearney Mesa. We're down to less than a half mile so please be careful out there let's send it over to Jenny now yeah that drive through Kearney Mesa for me at least off the freeway that was uh, a little sketchy it's pretty bad out there you can see road weather index showing where that fog is travel times are okay let me mention one crash Scripps Poway Parkway crews are blocking one lane at Cypress Canyon Road Jenny, thank you. New this morning, an elementary school is dealing with the aftermath of a fire that damaged classrooms. Firefighters looking into how it all started. News 8's Evan Ronnie is live in Paradise Hills now with an update for us. Good morning to you, Evan. Good morning to you as well. That's right. Fire crews responded just around 11 p.m. last night, and they say that as they responded, they saw 25 foot, uh, foot, foot high flames in the air. We want to show you the classrooms that were damaged behind us. So this is just against Paradise Hills Elementary School, three classrooms in total damaged, and fire crews say that because they had so many crews available at that time and that they were able to respond so quickly, they prevented it from spreading beyond just those three classrooms, but they do believe that it started because of of an encampment fire overnight. So it appears right now our investigation is underway and it looks like an encampment fire that was started in the shrubbery and extended to three classrooms. A National City and San Diego Fire Department responded around 1118 last night. Crews believe that the fire began in the shrubbery at that encampment next to the school. The battalion chief says neighbors had seen people experiencing homelessness in the bushes before and that there is a history of them in this neighborhood. Chief Babbler says crews responded quickly and were able to prevent those flames from damaging more than just the three classrooms. San Diego Unified is working now with Paradise Hills Elementary to find alternative classrooms for those students who would normally be in those three classrooms that were burned. They say there should not be any impacts to the normal school schedule as of today, your Friday. And again, they also noted that because of that quick action by the fire crews, no one was injured in the process, no civilians or fire personnel. They also say that as we start to head toward the cooler summer, cooler winter months, I should say, that it is more and more common to see people using uh, flames, open flames at an encampment, for example, whether that be to keep warm or to cook food. And they say that this is a time where it is it's especially important to know your fire safety and to know that fires like this can start up and spread easily with a fire that's so close to dry brush. In Paradise Hills, I'm Evan Arani, News 8. This morning, the nation will honor former Secretary of State Colin Powell. A funeral will be held at the Washington National Cathedral. Powell was battling a rare blood cancer when he died last month from complications related to COVID-19. He was 84 years old. President Biden and former President Barack Obama are expected at today's memorial service. And the ceremony starts at 9 a.m. You can watch it right here on CBS 8 or streaming on CBS8.com. And this just in here, the U.S. economy added 531,000 jobs in October. That was actually higher than expected and follows a disappointing jobs report in September. The unemployment rate also fell to 4.6%. And some promising news in the fight against COVID. Pfizer claims its experimental drug for COVID-19 cut rates of hospitalization and death by nearly 90%. The pill is meant for patients with mild to moderate infections. Pfizer will now ask the FDA and international regulators to authorize the pill. A similar pill from the company Merck is currently under FDA review and was cleared yesterday by UK regulators. A nurse is facing charges in the death of a young woman while she was in county jail. 24-year-old Elisa Cerna died while in custody at the Las Colinas detention facility back in 2019. 
The family's attorney says there is video of the nurse ignoring Serna as she was having a seizure in her cell. The DA charged 36-year-old Danella Pasqua with involuntary manslaughter for not following proper medical procedures. Pasqua is facing up to four years in prison. She will be in court in two weeks. Larry Maliette won't be getting out of jail anytime soon after a judge denied him bail. He's accused of murdering his wife, Maya, who's been missing since January. Her body has not been found. At a bail review hearing, his attorneys argued Larry Maliette is not a flight risk and has no history of violence. But prosecutors told the judge he's a danger to the public and to his children. Tens of thousands of Kaiser healthcare workers are set to go on strike in less than two weeks. The unions representing these workers say they will walk off the job November 15th. The employees want to raise. They are also protesting what they call bad faith contract negotiations. They say Kaiser's last offer included a 2% raise for current employees and a 15% pay cut for future hires. Kaiser has not responded to our request for comment. Well, it is considered the Olympics of horse racing. Today, the Breeders' Cup begins at the Del Mar Thoroughbred Club. The two-day event is expected to bring thousands of spectators, and the stakes are high for the Del Mar racetrack. There's a chance to break the all-time betting record for the Breeders' Cup, which is at $174 million. Oh, oh that's going to be a lot of money. Fleet Week San Diego kicks off this morning, and you are invited. You can tour Navy and U.S. Coast Guard ships and check out all the military equipment out there. Fleet Week San Diego is celebrating 20 years. It is back in person after it was derailed by the pandemic. The event is free, and it goes through Sunday. To learn more, go to CBS8.com and click on the Help button. We are honoring our veterans and active military members all next week here at CBS 8. We will share pictures of military members, thanking them for their service. If there is a person you would like to thank, just text a photo of them, 858-571-8888. Be sure to include that person's name, rank, and service, and we would love to give them a shout out. Keep those pictures coming in here. Yeah, and uh, you know a lot of people will be heading out to downtown San Diego, right around the Broadway Pier for Fleet Week starting today through the weekend. It's going to be really special out there. Uh, what we're looking at right now, of course, would be the foggy conditions downtown right by the airport. Uh, so this may impact flights, perhaps if you're, uh, you know, flying out this morning. Definitely do want to check. We may have another foggy day tomorrow morning as well. But each afternoon, the sun's been out. It's been pretty nice, right? Uh, down to uh, third mile visibility. For Oceanside and Carlsbad, Miramar, Kearney Mesa right now. So this is where it is really, uh, you know, kind of dangerous to drive through low lying clouds all the way into El Cajon at this hour. So along the 8, the 805 through the South Bay, you can see it there. So visibility all around pretty low, except for some of our inland communities. Escondido, Fallbrook, Ramona, it does not look like it's impacting you. So you see the dense fog advisory because of less than a quarter mile visibility. Weather service reminding you to drive slow, use those headlights, leave plenty of space between you and the car in front of you. And a beach hazard statement that's been issued through 9 o'clock tonight because of this big swell we're getting and this big pull of our waves from the new moon, which was yesterday. So right now our wave heights showing five footers, but that beach hazard statement is in effect because we could see up to seven footers, especially around 930 this morning. So heads up to anyone who lives along the coast. If you wanted to go for a walk this morning, maybe wait till low tide, which will be around 445 today. Places like Cardiff, IB, we could see some of that coastal flooding that we tend to see in those low lying areas parking lots, boardwalks, places like that. Uh, a check of our temperatures right now, 60 degrees downtown, 55 in El Cajon, taking you over the next few hours. We'll see that sun, hopefully by noon. That's the plan here with temperatures in the low to mid 70s along our coast.